Hello my friends, welcome in. I hope you've got a lovely beverage to enjoy while we have this video, this get ready with me session here this morning. I did a little self tan on the face last night with my Isle of Paradise drops, so that's why I'm looking like I have a little more color. Not because I've been uh, luxuriating outside at all, which would have been nice this weekend. I mean, I did get out just a little bit, but it was crazy. I was looking at my step count at the end of yesterday and it was 12,000 steps. Now that was not with any walks, any exercise or any shopping. Like those are some key big things that, you know, just amp up your step count. It was just straight up parenting. It was laundry. It was putting stuff away. It was putting clothes away. It was chasing kids around. And I was like, man, I, I mean, at the end of that day, I was spent. I'd like to say I did some of those other things, but I didn't. Y'all know the way some of those hard working parent days can be. Okay. I have got on already my skincare. Oops, I'm trying to put something away here. I'm trying to multitask while I do a video. Skincare on and my uh, sunscreen is also on and this is just gonna be like mainly new products just stuff I've been playing with lately I've got this Catrice glow beautifying face oil and I don't know if you can tell from the bottom it's got kind of like a pearlescent look it reminds me of one of those like Farsali serum type things but it has almond jojoba argon and rose oil in it I thought maybe I could use that like a bit of a primer today see how it's got that pinkish look and it has a nice scent to it as well. That's really why it reminds me of the, it's not unicorn tears or unicorn dreams, unicorn essence. That may have been it, unicorn tears. <laughs> Probably gonna have a lot of stories about yesterday, but at one point my teething bubba woke up from his nap about an hour early, got up. I, I knew he was teething because he didn't even want milk. Like when he got up, he just wanted to cry did, and only wanted to be held by me. And like Belle's up and she's trying to like, bless her heart, entertain him with some different things and get him interested. Um, and I'm in the process of assembling a chili soup in the crock pot. I know first day of spring, let's ring it in with some chili, but I needed something low carb, lower carb for Bub and I, and that's what it was. And I'm trying to like use a can opener while holding a baby. It's really hard to use a can opener and hold a baby, but I was pretty sure some of his tears fell into the chili. That's why unicorn tears popped into my mind. I'm like, uh, I got some baby tears in my chili. I, I, you can't make this stuff up, people. I got a new foundation. Looks like this. It's the new Huda Foundation, which looks exactly like the old Huda Foundation. Um, this is called Flawless Filter Luminous Matte Full Coverage Makeup in the shade Custard for me. And I am loving this stuff. I'm doing a near full pump of this. It's plenty. I dab it around. I've been blending it in with the Beauty Blender, and it has just been phenomenal looking on the skin, like really nice coverage, but not too heavy looking, wears well. So far, nothing bad to say about it. I did get the chili done and it was really good. All that went down, like just moments after Bub's like, I think I'm gonna go out and wash my truck. And then he got the lovely message from me. How long is that gonna take? Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Like, it's so pretty. It, by the way, does not have like a, a tackiness on the skin because they called it, what was in the name? Full coverage luminous. The luminosity thing does not result in like a really different texture. The other one was very, very full coverage as well. This one just seems like it's got a little more glow in it. What was the other one actually called? I thought it was so strange that they didn't change up something on the bottle. Unless maybe they're just really phasing out the first kind. I'm not sure. So let me finish getting this blended in. So I have this in the custard shade too. The other one. High coverage cream foundation is what they call that. But you see how there is actually like a little bit of luminosity in there. Even though there's not like a real shine on the surface of the skin. Like and to touch it, it doesn't feel dewy. It really feels set. There's that little bit of luminosity. Okay, now I thought I would use some more of this Tarte Ultra Creamy, um, the new version of Shape Tape. This is in the shade Light Medium 29N. And I used this in my, as like a demo, in my Ulta 21 Days of Beauty video. But I just thought I would use it some more so we could all see how it works with this foundation. I'm gonna cover up this zit here. Uh, by the way, I've heard about some stuff called drying lotion. I think it's actually been around a really long time, like from Mario Badescu or maybe another brand. I don't know. Does that stuff really work like to dry up one solitary zit? Anyway, I used over the weekend with this foundation, I used my e.l.f. hydrating and absolutely loved it. Like I just thought it looked 
fantastic with this. And actually that was also the combo I was wearing in my dupes video. And I got a lot of nice compliments about my skin in that video. And it was the e.l.f. Camo Hydrating Concealer with this foundation. I just kind of feel like Tarte came in a little late to the game with this idea for shape tape. Like, I think they should have done it sooner because e.l.f. had their chance to get a strong foothold on that part of the market. And really, Tarte did have their Maracuja concealer, which is like richer than any of this stuff. You know, really has that dewiness, that little goes a long way kind of tackiness, stickiness almost on the skin. They had that, and then they put out something that was like the, the hydro sealer, right? So it's like they've already got really a couple of versions of more hydrating shape tapes, essentially. But, well, I don't know. They probably just knew, hey, let's put the shape tape name on it. It'll sell. But here we go. I've got that on right here. I still feel like I'm seeing kind of a circle there, especially on the left side. I'm going to bump it up a little more, but I just don't feel like I saw that with the e.l.f. when I used it. Oh, and I got a fleck of it that spurted out onto my leggings. Sometimes, like I said, when I first apply concealer, I said this in a, like three videos ago. <laughs> I'm saying like I said, like I said it two seconds ago. Um, but sometimes I put my concealer initially up pretty close to the eye. And then once I add a little bit more kind of down in this area, if I'm building, that really helps. Another new product here. This is from Pure. I really wanted to try their little combo face palettes. So this is the Fair to Light one. And this is what we have in here. I kind of love how there's a different texture on each powder, but we have a translucent powder, a bronzer, a blush, and a highlighter. I got this from Ulta's website, and I wasn't quite sure whether to go for this shade or the next one deeper. I'm really glad I went for this um, because I would definitely consider myself like even light to medium, and I wouldn't want to be darker than like that highlight shade. This bronzer is plenty for me. This is the kind of translucent powder I'd want to be using, so this really works for me. And you guys know I love the fact that there is a translucent powder in a powder palette like this because then it truly takes care of everything, does it not? If you're only doing blush, bronzer, highlight, that can be nice, but it's not everything. But I'm going to try something today that I haven't tried yet, which is dry sponge into that translucent powder shade and doing really a little bit of baking here. I have so gotten back into this, guys, since the David video, and my skin really hasn't been, like, suffering for it or looking worse for it. You know, gosh, that that has a Smashbox effect, if not brighter. Love that. See, he used the Smashbox contour palette, which I love. Those are some very soft, nice textures, but this, like, I don't know, just kind of lays down on the skin even easier. But I've been baking with, like, my different loose powders, a little bit and I don't know guys like I'm prepping my skin really well I'm giving it a lot of moisture underneath and just kind of liking how flawless everything's looking I had used my Fenty powders to do some baking recently but I really like the Huda one too um, that one performed really well for me yesterday Huda loose powder okay so I've got that on that's sitting right here and down the nose and a little bit thick on the chin too and I am gonna like kind of dust away some of this in a second but first I'm going to use the bronzer. So I got a nice matte kind of cool bronzer and it looks super natural, I got to say. Was anybody else like really wondering about these palettes? They came out in like, I want to say three or four different tones. That's what we need to be seeing more of when it comes to these complexion palettes, right? But the pigmentation is so good. It's like soft, easy to work with. I'm gonna contour a little bit with that and try to not go down too low. I mean, this is the fair to light. Like, I wouldn't have wanted to go darker. So I think you really want that translucent shade to still be brightening on you. And again, the bronzer is plenty dark enough. I'm never sure about the forehead. Like, I'm never sure if I like the way I've done it. Because my forehead, you know, First off, it's not 100% flat. I saw somebody say, like, this was years ago and it stuck with me. Like, your forehead never looks even. It's always catching the light. And I'm like, well, that's because it's three-dimensional. <laughs> like, it, it curves back here and it will kind of catch the light there. Like, but, okay, I'm taking, like, my little e.l.f. small tapered brush. And there's not a ton of excess right there. There is on my nose. I'm just kind of using a light hand 
and dusting that powder away and it's just like looking so nice there. So no shimmer to be clear in these three. This is our shimmer. So now we're gonna move on to the blush. Really pretty dusty rose. You're gonna love it. I love it. Gosh, I've got a lot of blush on. I've got a lot of blush on right now. I'm very blushy. Then you go lighter on the next cheek, but you're like, well, it doesn't look like the other cheek. I'm taking a little bit of the translucent powder and just blending it over this a little bit. Powdered to the gods today. That helps somewhat. <laughs> I'm just gonna be blushy today. I got a little heavy handed there, it's all right. Now we're gonna do this highlight which it does not look like pure white pearliness, does it? But if you see it on my finger in a swatch there, it's sort of that kind of Becca Opal vibe. It looks like the softest of rose golds here in the pan, but then it comes off pretty bright on the skin. I'm gonna pop this on here so you can see that. Love taking a highlight on top of beautiful coverage. I feel like it's springtime and maybe I should be going for one of my barely there like tinted moisturizers right now, but suddenly I'm falling into the full coverage trap again. But I think it's fun to find things that are full coverage and wear well and look fresh all day. But few things stay looking as fresh all day as Estee Lauder double wear, I gotta say. I think that might wear even better than this Huda. Not that the Huda's bad about staying power, but like Estee Lauder just 100% of the time can be counted on. Talking about original double wear, my friends. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of that highlight right there on the Cupid's bow. Nice. Then I'm gonna pop on a little bit more dewy um, setting spray. So this is my Glossier, the Soothing Face Mist. So yeah, I'm really happy with that little pure palette. I mean, I just, I think that's very handy, very travel friendly. As you can see, the intensity, like the blush that I have on today, but I don't care. I like blush. Bottom line, it's four very good quality products all in one. Um, the Tarte Shape Tape, I, we're doing like a little mid-chapter checkpoint here, <laughs> like in your child's math book. The Ultra Creamy, I think is good, but I don't see any real reason to get this over the e.l.f. Hydrating. That one just really works for me. And then this Huda foundation I think is beautiful. The new Luminous Matte, really like it. I've got some new brow stuff here from Wet n Wild. It's called Brow Sessive. It's a brow pencil with a spoolie on the other end and a brow shaping gel. So we're gonna use both today. Have this pencil in dark brown and gang, it's just a traditional pencil. It's just one of those you sharpen it, you do the work type of pencil. There's nothing fancy about this. It's actually got a pretty good texture to it for me because I don't love the really, really soft stuff that just kind of immediately melts down on your brow. I like a texture that is just a little more on the dry side and that's what this is. First you take it through, then you rake it through and that's that. Like, I, I just, don't we all know that Wet n Wild has had like a sharpenable brow pencil out for some time? but now they're putting it out and calling it brow obsessive. We as consumers have to be on the lookout for stuff like that that's merely been like renamed and been given a cute little logo or something when it's really been around all the time. Do you remember when Wet n Wild put out these palettes? It was when they were just starting to own the eyeshadow game just before, before like the comfort zone palettes and their like really, really good formula came out. They had some little palettes called Ultimate Expressions, I wanna say. Um, I believe I was buying that stuff and finding that stuff right around the time we moved down to Southern Illinois. So that would have been like late 2006, early 2007 maybe. Maybe even before then I'd gotten some, but like just kind of neutral, classic palettes. But they were good. And that was when Wet n Wild was just starting to like really blossom. I don't know why that comes up. Why do I use something and have to like think back into the past for to reminisce about the brand? The more I use this, the more I'm kind of like, it's taking too much time. Two dollars, e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil could have done that in probably half the time. See, it's like having a little bit of trouble laying down here. I'm really pressing over and going over the same area a lot. Now the gel. This is a little bit better. Really, really Glossier Boy Brow-ish. I don't think we're seeing fibers in this one, no. But a very pigmented, like highly tinted gel. Thing I haven't really paid a lot of attention to with this one has been how well it's been holding, because I've used it a few times. And on the application, I feel like it's giving off a lot of color, but I guess it's not making me feel that immediate locked-in hold that the Glossier or the e.l.f. makes me feel, just saying. 
but it's there and it is kind of a nice supplement, I will say, having that colored gel just to go through. If you struggle a little bit with this, this comes in and rescues it. What's up now? We got a new Milani eyeshadow primer. Did you hear? The other one died about a week ago. I love the comments noting how hell-bent I was on squeezing every last drop out and then people saying like, why didn't she cut it open and get out even more? And I'm like, don't you know I'm how emotionally connected I am to that tube at this point? <laughs> I'm not cutting it open. See, I, I, I want to find a good place for it. I have these little palettes that ColourPop sent from their Bambi collection. So cute and springy. Um, really cute little mini palettes here. I already used the Thumper one. That was the one that immediately intrigued me. So I'll pop up a picture of that. It's got kind of like a dusty lilac vibe with a little splash of very light, barely there pistachio green. I like the textures in there. I actually thought that Miss Bunny shade was very like shiny and shimmery. It's a cute little palette. And then the Bambi one looks like this. So there's all your neutral warmth with a very yellowy gold in there. Um, everything else is matte except, well, there's a little shimmer in that shade. And by the way, we have deer coming up to our backyard all the dang time. It's so much fun to see them wandering through. Like, we love watching the birds, we love seeing the deer. Today, though, I think I'm going to use the flower palette for some purple, um, some orchid. Look at that really bold orchid. We're going for the skunk palette, y'all. Let's go to the pretty flower shade right here for our crease. Let's see what we're talking about color intensity wise. ColourPop just puts stuff out so fast, you know? And the thing is, they're cute and thoughtful looking collections. It's all very compelling, I think, good looking stuff. But how does one really stay on top of ColourPop? Because like, I'm talking about this, but there's a bunch of stuff I haven't been able to talk about because I just haven't been able to get it done. The thing is with this palette, the purple is gonna be unavoidable. Like you're going to have to incorporate that. You're not gonna get like a little neutral crease shade. You're gonna crease yourself with purple. You're gonna intensify it with purple. You're gonna shimmer with purple. I'm ready. I wanna take that up even higher though. Again, only the shade Pretty Flower so far. Try to use that space a little more. I love the shade. It's matte little stinker. <laughs> this matte, really pretty violet shade. Add some of this in, and I also want to put this on my lid too. Wow. Now it's going to be one kind of intensity when you're layering it over your lighter initial crease color. And it's going to be another kind of intensity when we pop this on the lid. Remember when Radiant Orchid was the Pantone color of the year? Yep, the good old days. I'm going to go back with little stinker now with a flat brush. And I'm going to pat this like all over my lid. It's a very, you know, pinky purple. That's why I say orchid. When I see shades like this, that's what I think. How's everybody's March Madness bracket looking? Mine is not looking so good considering I did predict that Illinois would win the whole thing. I think a lot of people probably did, but Loyola took him out yesterday and we were really like in my heart, I was rooting for Loyola because they're an SIU's conference and I don't know, they're an amazing team. And SIU like went into overtime against that team. So it just goes to show like who's willing to play the hardest kind of thing. But there are probably a lot of sad Illini fans around. So I'm sorry, you guys. Hard to see the season end. But don't you feel like underdogs have a little advantage going in because they're, they've got more of a nothing to lose mentality and chip on their shoulder. And I think it's that chip on your shoulder in this tournament that just sends some teams up over the edge, you know, what makes it so much fun to watch. Mm, now what? I really want to use some of this hibernating shade. Let's get you up close so you can actually see what that one's about. Will the camera show? There. See that sheen in that one? Very fine shimmer, so it might actually translate. Ooh, ton, ton of fallout just came off my brush there. Tap, tap, tap. I do want a little bit of this on the outside. This is kind of reminding me of like a Violet Voss palette that I was really tempted by. Was that maybe a year or so ago? Like that really pretty violet bright palette, like bite size, whatever they call it, mini palette. Speaking of bite size, I need to get some more bite size reviews up in here. So that was me trying to put this on in a very controlled fashion. 
because I, I just didn't want too much darkness. I didn't want dark to overtake this look, but yet I did want that little bit of contrast there. What time is it? Oh, six already. Now there's this color in the middle called Oh Gosh. Oh, and it is beautiful. I'm picturing, let's tap that on right here. I'm just using my finger because my flat brush is still uh, dirty right now. Kind of pretty having that splash right there. And this shimmer is so pigmented, like it's really smooth. It's really holding its own, you know, even right on top of a matte powder. Like it's just popping on looking beautiful. Just letting that center lid shine. And then we have this very light shade called So Shy, which shears out with a little bit of like some pinky iridescence. And I'm thinking that would be pretty around the inner corner. I'm using my little Profusion Flat Precise eyeshadow brush for this. Right there. There's really a nice range in this palette. If you love purple and pinky purple orchid shades, the light to dark is awesome. Like I feel like nothing is lacking. It's got your lightest of the light shade needed. It's got your really, really deep color. Just be careful with that one. Like I said, I tapped in and I tapped off a ton of excess off my brush after going into uh, hibernating right there. I'm feeling like I want to go around the bottom just a little, some of that right here. It's just so intense. And it really just looks black, honestly. And now maybe we take the Profusion ES6 and just go over that. Let it smudge. I think smudge would be a cute name for a cat. Yep, it's almost kitten season. I need a cat. I need a couple of kittens, actually. I already envisioned if I got a couple cats and one's kind of grayish, and maybe one's a little more like yellowish, or just cream colored, a little lighter in, in color. Wouldn't biscuits and gravy be a cute little name for them? Have I already talked about this? I'm having a deja vu moment. So I took hibernating, very concentrated, on the lower lash line, kind of attempted to blend that out somewhat. Uh, took a softer brush with a little stinker, I just like to say that, and went over it some more. There we go. And do some eyeliner. This is just my Milani Stay Put Matte 17 Hour Wear. Wears like iron eyeliner. I do have a little bit of fallout that I can see when looking up super close. I feel like I should go in with my little bit smaller, my E27, so it's like a mini sized E25 just with a little bit of the little stinker shade and the pretty flower shade. Just because I'm not quite so sure about how this crease is doing. I'm going to use that to blend through all this. And then I don't want to lose that oh gosh color. Love that shine. That is so pretty. Mascara today. I know I'm going to pop on a lash actually. So I'm just going to put on this Maybelline Sky High Lash Sensational, which was never really my personal favorite. I know a lot of people liked it on like viral videos and TikTok and whatnot, but I'm just going to throw that on because frankly I'm trying to use it up. And then I'm going to put on some of my Kiss So Real lashes. And I would bust into a new box because I got several new styles. So I love that type of lash so much. They're the My Lash But Better. The style I have and have been using is called So Real. But they're packaged like this. They're absolutely beautiful. I would bust into one of those new boxes, but my other ones, the one pair that I've used over and over, are still going strong. Again, the style is called So Real. So I'm going to just use them again. They're beautiful and they cannot be stopped. Here we go. Here we go. Got the lashes on. Oh, loving the eye look. I think, I mean, I like the thumper one, but so far I think I like the flower one even better. I haven't tried the Bambi, but I'm pretty darn sure the look I'll get with Bambi. The warm neutrals, like, I've, I've seen a lot of that, but I really like this flower palette. Now for lips, um, I'm going to pop on this NARS Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balm in the shade Unrestricted. So they've got these new lip balms. Remember when they put out those kind of shiny ones and they were so nice, so soft? Well, I'm kind of obsessed with these. The softness. Mm, they even smell good. Kind of like a vanilla wafer. Look how pretty and effortless that shade is. Just this soft pink, like I'm not really trying, but I'm totally trying actually. And you know what I kind of want to do? Take a little bit of one of my lip liners that I have handy here. Let's use Nude Entrance from Milani and just kind of neaten up the lines a little. But there's some really pretty like neutral shades 
in that collection. I feel like I need to do a try on or a little bit more of a review. But they're just so comfy, not shiny. You might be thinking, hmm, soft matte balms. I've heard you talk about that with the Glossier. These are much smoother than the Glossier like the Generation G and all that. These just glide on. They feel like really soft, but yet still matte. Okay, let's take some rollers out, my friends. And these are my T3 Hot Rollers. I gotta say, there's nothing like them. I have been willing to try so many cheap rollers in hopes of finding something that could do what these do for my hair. You know, my straight curl resistant hair. You've heard that song and dance about my lashes. It's the same story with the hair, but nothing works like these. Nothing. And these are the smaller, I want to say the one inch size. I do have a larger set, but these really just like, oh, I love what they do for this length of hair. How's this for some springtime glam? Guys, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I would say top products for me in this video would be the Huda Foundation, the Pure Palette, and then I really like the Flower Palette, although, I mean, these are some purpley shades that I know I do have elsewhere currently in my collection, but of the Bambi collection, like, I really like that palette, and I love these soft, matte, tinted lip balms from NARS. And, of course, the False Lash. I do love those lashes. I hope you had fun. I hope your spring is getting off to a good start, and I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye.